Hello, so in this video, we are going to be talking about how to use AI, so artificial intelligence, ChatGPT here, to help you with your English learning. So in this video, I'll be sharing about eight different ways, general ways to use ChatGPT to improve your English with some prompts. I think it's just going to like, blow your mind. Of course, if you like these kind of videos, let me know down below and I can do more using AI to improve your English videos. But to start off, the first way that you can use ChatGPT is to treat it like a personal grammar tutor. So maybe you don't really understand why something is grammatically correct or incorrect or when to use what. And I'm going to share with you an example really quickly. So the first one, Let's say you don't know the difference between too much and too many. You can say, what is the difference between too much and too many? So I can ask. Usually it will just explain and not give examples, but I have been playing with ChatGPT, so it will give examples. And I will say, give me two examples of each and explain it in point form. In point form will make it a lot less a lot less difficult to read and it's just very concise. So what so what is the difference between too much and too many? Give me two examples of each. All right. So too much is used with uncountable nouns. So nouns that you cannot count. For example, there is too much sugar in this coffee. You can't say one sugar, two sugar, three sugars. I mean, you can when you're talking about, you know, one pack of sugar, but generally speaking, you can't really count sugar. So we can see also she has been working too much lately. She's been working too much, right? So work is an uncountable concept. It tells you right here. Then too many is with countable nouns. So for example, there are too many books on the shelf. We can count books, one book, two books, three books, four books. And we invited too many people to the party. We can have one person, two people, three people, four people, right? So we can count people. So that's an example of allowing ChatGPT to be your grammar tutor and to help guide you to use different words correctly. So the second way of using ChatGPT for English help is to ask it to find out the best way to say something. So for example, if you're having some doubts, you can say, is it, I like it a lot. Or I, I a lot like it, right? So maybe you're still kind of unsure about different word order and you want to know what's correct, what's not. Ask ChatGPT. So the correct phrase is, I like it a lot, right? So I a lot like it is not a typical or grammatically correct, so it's incorrect. Um, or you can even ask other ways. What are other ways to say this? If you want to not just use one way of saying something, you can say, what are other ways to say this? So it'll probably say, I really like it. Um, you know, I enjoy it very much. I'm quite fond of, I'm a big fan of it, right? So it really helps you to expand your vocabulary and see different ways of, you know, saying the same thing, which is a uh, which is really, really cool that it does this. The next general way to use ChatGPT is to ask it for different scripts to really get to know what real life conversation looks like. This is particularly helpful if you are an immigrant that is living in an English speaking country, maybe you're in Canada, maybe you're in the United States, and I don't know, you have to maybe call the pharmacy or call the doctor's office or have small talk with people and you're thinking, I don't really know how to do that or how to properly formulate my words. So what you can do is you can ask it, for example, let's talk about small talk. Not all cultures have small talk. So I can ask ChatGPT, can you give me examples or can you give me an example? of a script for small talk. 
Of course, you're not going to memorize this script because if you say something and someone says something different, you're not going to be able to follow it. However, it is amazing because it helps you see how words can be said, you know, what can happen. So let's see. In an elevator. Let's add in an elevator. Yes. So can you give me an example of a script for small talk in an elevator? So we say, you know, you enter an elevator with the other person inside. Good morning. Good afternoon. Busy day, isn't it? Right. So you can see how natural conversation can happen. And let's say, um, let's say you want to see other scripts. And also see this cool cultural note. It says in an el in elevator small talk, it's essential to keep the conversation light, positive, and non-intrusive. Cool. So you don't really ask people where they live, <laughs> especially if they are wanting to especially if you don't know them. So there's, you know, don't be intrusive. Don't ask too personal questions, but um, let's ask for another script. Can you give me another example? Just so that I can kind of see what this looks like. Um, I don't see heading up to the office. Yes, just a regular work day, right? So you can see how this works. There's different kind of small talk examples that you can get. Um, you can also ask for different cultural tips. Can you give me some more cultural tips? Oh, in table format of what is acceptable in American conversation with strangers and what is not. So, you know, in different cultures, there's different things that are okay to talk about, different things that aren't, right? So in America, we generally smile and we make eye contact. Uh, it's not acceptable to stare <laughs> for an extended period of time. Um, you know, friendly greeting, hello, hi, it's rude to ignore or avoid eye contact. So you know, asking very personal questions. We don't do that. Small talk. We talk about the weather, events, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. So seeing that, I'm hoping that helps you really, you know, learn different cultural things that maybe you might not have realized just by going out and about. So, so I hear a lot of people asking me, well, how do I ask someone out? Right? So uh, you can even say, can you give me, me a script? of how to ask a Canadian girl out because <laughs> I've heard people ask this. Um, there we go. So it'll give you an idea. And while it is formulating this, I'm going to ask also ask for, can you also give me a list of 15 pickup lines. I'm kind of typing really fast. Yeah, so these are pickup lines are, are kind of silly ways to break the ice and be funny. <laughs> but you know what? Now that I'm reading them, uh, I don't think you should actually use them. If you're a vegetable, you'd be a cute cucumber. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I, I don't think I'd react well to someone who said this but I mean it can make someone laugh so do you have a band-aid because I just scraped my knee falling <laughs> it's kind of stupid but anyways just know that you can have you can just get so so many ideas from a chat GPT um let's say another one let's say your English is it that great and you want to have a script um let's say can you give me a script for a first for a doctor's visit let's do that a doctor's visit I have I don't know I have a, a sore throat and a fever and can yeah so we'll do that so they did the whole thing whole script for you right here you can see that it's just kind of it makes the scripts really fast so there we go now let's say you don't really understand everything in the script you can say can you 
rewrite the script, but also write the translation in your language, but I'm going to say in French, under each line. So, for example, if you are unsure about different things, oh, as you can see, it's, it's giving me everything in French, and I want it to be in French and English, but it will help you kind of see the translation. So, ChatGPT does not always give you exactly what you want, but I'll show you. You can always ask it more questions. So, I'll say, now can you give me the English and the, the French scripts together, please. So I can see the translation of each line. Okay. I'm typing too fast, so I'm making a lot of mistakes. Okay, so you can kind of see right now how you have like the mid-sign, you have it all in French, and then you have it in English, just so that, you know, you can really see different vocabulary words that you may not have understood right away. So there we go. So you can have different scripts for anything, for you're going to see the doctor, you're going to make friends, you're going to go, I don't know, sign up for a sports group, or if you want to have a script on, I don't know, making friends or scripts on ordering a coffee, right? So there's a bunch of things that you can look at. The next way that you can use ChatGPT is to learn more vocabulary or more words. So for example, I can say, can you give me the top 10 slang words that are, the, that are common in Canada. No, I'm going to say United States. In the United States. And you say in 2023, but technically ChatGPT only has, is no only updated until 2021. So yeah, there we go. Only up to 2021, but still. They didn't give me the answer. So I can say, can you give me the <laughs> top, top 10 slang words? in point form, right? Because I do like um, it to be short and concise in point form with the definition and two examples of each. So I'm gonna ask them that. Ask them, ask him, I don't know, what is chat GPT, is it an it? <laughs> so, all right, so we can see that we have the word lit. It says the definition, some examples, right? Savage. Sam, there's some of these words that I am too old to understand. This one I vaguely know. So flex, clout, ye, <laughs> goat, cap. Anyways, so you can kind of see how versatile it is. And let's say you want to have some vocabulary on something that you're going through or something that you want to expand your vocabulary on. Maybe you're pregnant and you want more words. So you can say, can you give me the top 20 pregnancy vocabulary words? All right, so this could be helpful if you're going to the doctor, right? Or if you're explaining your pregnancy. And there we go. So we have pregnancy, embryo, fetus, you know, any kind of subject that you want to know more, you just ask for the top whatever words. And you can also ask for more. So let's say, you know, they gave us 20 words, you can say, give me five more, right? So then you have more and more. And then if you're not really sure what these mean, you can also ask for a translation. Um, cute count, I've never heard of that before. Okay, can you give me a translation in, I don't know, Spanish, let's say Spanish, of these five words? So instead of having to look everything up, you can just ask for oh, translation, right? So it can translate for you as well. So the next general way to use ChatGPT would be to get ChatGPT to make you worksheets. So let me show you an example. And of course, if you have any other examples or other ways that you would use ChatGPT or you have in the past, feel free to share what you've asked it down in the description to help other people have different ideas. For my idea, I'm going to share with you prepositions. Prepositions a lot of English learners have trouble with. So for example, I need 
to practice my prepositions um, in English. Could you give me a fill in the blank list of questions to fill out with the answers at the very bottom? Okay, because I don't want to see the question, answer, question, answer. I want to see question, 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 questions. Then at the very end, there's answers, so I can double check. So at the very bottom, uh, give me. 10 questions, right? So you can do this every day if you really want to. So there we go. And you might not want to go to the, the bottom quite yet. So are you, mm, you know, at math, right? So then it will say all of the answers in the bottom. And sometimes if you want clarification, you can also ask like, why? So I can say, why is one or why is number one at, right? So why is number one at, right? So then it would be able to give you more of an explanation, right? The preposition is at because we typically use at to talk about someone's proficiency or skill in a particular subject or activity. So I can even ask, can you give me more examples of using at to talk about someone's proficiency. So I'm just copying, basically copying and pasting that. I would like, if you could give it a question, I would like 10, please. You don't have to say please, but I used to. So she's excellent at playing piano. He's very good at solving complex puzzles. They are skilled at cooking, right? So you can see how that, that works. Um, other kinds of worksheets that you can ask for, other quizzes, are multiple choice quizzes. So for example, my Ukrainian really is not that great. So I can say, can you create me a multiple choice quiz on the most common English verbs with the translations, oop, translations in Ukrainian, yeah, with the translation in Ukrainian. Yeah, there we go. I think that should, I think they should understand that. All right, so we have that. It may or may not give me like the answers at the end, but if it does not give you answers at the end, you can always ask, right? So for example, this could be a really cool way for me to practice. Oh, there we go. So the answers. If not, you can say, can I have the answers? Right, so you can make quizzes to really test yourself on whatever you want to test yourself on. Um, multiple choice quizzes, um, fill in the blank, which is what I'm doing, what I've been doing, um, and like true and false. So similar to the first one, you can learn and practice your grammar. So if you're wanting to have a like a review of, for example, the tenses, maybe present verb tenses, you can say, can you Show me in table format the present verb tenses, when to use them, and an example of each. It's, it's going to be nicely set out into table format, so it does create a table for you as well. So you can see the simple present is used for these reasons, and here are some examples. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just really, 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 really great. And if you want to, you know, continue practicing, you can also ask, can you make me a worksheet to practice knowing when to use each present tense? I think it would be able to do that. I don't know how many questions it automatically gives, but you can always ask for more. Right, <laughs> voila, we got this right here. And of course you, you might wanna scroll up before it gives you the answers just so that you can't see it. But 
as you can see, like it's so versatile, you can use so much. Another thing that is really cool is sometimes if you want to check your grammar, if you want to know if something is grammatically correct, you can ask ChatGPT, is this grammatically correct? <laughs> Again, I'm typing too fast. Grammatically correct. Oh, oops. Is this grammatically? <laughs> Yeah, I got, it says that your message got cut off. Yeah. Is this grammatically correct? Usually I'll do like dot, dot, dot. And then I'll ask a question. So I don't know. Um, I very know him well, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's an example. And it will tell you if it's grammatically correct or not. But it'll say the sentence, I very know him well, is not grammatically correct in standard English. Instead, you should say, I know him very well. So it will help correct you. So whenever you want to know, just say, is this grammatically correct? And then type it in. Because I don't think ChatGPT will correct you automatically unless you ask. Other things you can ask for, maybe like resources. So, so I could ask ChatGPT things like, what are some apps to help me learn English? Right? So we can find out different apps. And I'm really curious to see what it tells me. Yeah, so Duolingo, Rosetta Stone. And like I mentioned, ChatGPT is not always 100% right. There are sometimes it recommends me things that aren't necessarily the best, but, you know, there we go. I can also say what are the, what are free apps to help me improve my English, for example. And it will talk about free apps, right? So again, they it may or may not be right because I don't think all of these are free. But anyways, it gives you a really good idea. Another way you can use ChatGPT is you can grab a link, copy and paste it here. Sometimes ChatGPT, for the most part, it cannot access external links, but there have been times where I have put a link and I've asked ChatGPT to summarize an article in, in point format sorry, in point form, I mean, and um, yeah, it just kind of summarizes everything to help me really understand what the article was saying. But I will definitely put some of the chat prompts down below in the description so you can copy and paste some cool prompts that you can use for your English language learning. Again, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Tell me how you have used ChatGPT or how you will be using ChatGPT for English or actually for anything because it's a really cool tool. And if you want to watch any of my other videos, feel free to check it out over there. Anyways, take care and bye-bye.